so good morning to all of you i hope you all have completed the last assignment which i had given i hadn't given the answer since every answer was there in the presentation or if you had read the chapter from there also you will get all the answers i had done like that because you will it, it will force you to read the chapter at least okay so that was part 1 of the chapter internet tools today i'm going to start with part 2 where all the remaining topics will be completed and i had already started about social networking site in the last class today we'll start with basic features of social networking site by now those who have read the chapter or followed the full presentation they must be knowing the full form of sns it is social networking site so basically features we are going to discuss what things will be displayed what you have to create what you have to do while using social networking sites so first thing before creating your account there you have to register or create your profile so for that every social networking site provides you an online form where you have to fill the details like your age education location um what your interest your hobbies many things are there then and you have to create a password username everything is there which you have to provide and that too in the form of an online form then next comes security settings this helps you to configure the settings which is related to your account like if you are creating a page a, so, a page on a social networking site what contents on uh, on your uh, page should be visible to whom it should be visible should it be partially visible or it should be public for all so those settings can be done then comes what things or what features are been provided when you are using this social networking site here you can chat with someone you can upload your photos videos you can play games you can uh, see two people are part of the same social networking site so they can comment on the data which is posted by some uh, by the other site people okay so comments are there replies are there even you can send email and it also helps you to search their search icon is also available uh, and you can search the content which you want clear next comes and some other features which are not provided by all the social networking sites so these are exclusive for few sns sites uh, first one here is crowd sourcing let me explain it to you crowd sourcing means um a group of people will post their ideas opinions through the internet and there there are some people who will be using those ideas or opinions okay it is done basically on monetary basis they will be charging some amount for that let me give you an example which is uh, very well explained in your book it is from www.99designs.com it is a website where clients can post their requirements requirements like they want some business cards they want to uh, get their uh, company's logo design all those requirements will be posted and then different people who are involved in these uh, creative works they will be posting their works on those um, social sites so th those people who want their work to be done they will follow the work posted by them and they will choose one of the person out of the given uh, datas uh, on the social networking site and they will get their work done for some amount so this is known as crowd sourcing okay next is mashups mashups is a term which refers to combining different elements such as content and application together like uh, there is a, a mashup of google maps and twitter where uh, you can find out the data posted on twitter has come from which location so google maps will help you to find out the location and twitter will give you the content which you want so the co combination of these two known as mashups last one is location based services if you have used nowadays you have that idea that you can share your live location to someone like if uh, somebody wants uh, to know where uh, you are okay uh, that is also four square and way n which stands for where are you okay so where are you now these are examples of sns sites which helps you to share the location 
whatsapp also is having that you can, with the help of with the mesh up of google map and whatsapp you can share your live location and there also one security setting is there for how much time you want that person to view your live location suppose for 15 minutes only i want that particular person to whom i'm sharing my location should view it after that it should stop it should stop working okay so this setting is also there then comes what are the basic sns settings which can be done okay this all you all are knowing because while creating whatsapp account while creating your social networking any facebook account and all these features are provided like access who can send you message who can send the uh, data what type of datas will be posted whom you want to be your friends all this uh, settings are in your hand next comes privacy privacy allows like on your page what content should be public or what should be private like in whatsapp also there are uh, options that who can view your profile pic you want for everyone or only for friends same way your status or anything which you are posting you can make it public or private then comes your profile view you must have seen that nowadays in facebook there is an option for locking your profile earlier it was like if somebody is there on facebook and they are searching for uh, some people they can view they can go through their details uh, the featured photos can be shown but if you want nowadays it can be locked so if it depends totally on you do you want to make your profile pic public or you want others to open it to view your uh, pictures and all so these type of settings can be done next is cloud computing this i'll have to uh, explain you in detail uh, like earlier when uh, digital cameras were not there we used to click the picture then those pictures were cleaned and hard copies were generated and we used to make photo albums and all that was the only way to keep a backup of our data that time backup of photographs then digital cameras came um, in in existence and there uh, we used to uh, save uh, our photos or the details uh, in the small small uh, chips or um, any other storage device like memory card sd card and all were used for keeping our data safe but there also some limitation was there after sometimes if it is a cd or dvd it used to stop working so these were the means problems with those type of devices then uh, this term came cloud computing this is basically storing your data online on internet which can be accessed from anywhere you have to create your username and password and whenever it is required from any other location even if you are not carrying any uh, pen drive or cd or dvd you have your user id and password you can log into any computer or any other kind of device from where internet can be accessed and uh, accessed and you can view your data so what how they are managing it this type of this level of connectivity how they manage they use a network of servers which have storage space and different types of applications it also enables a number of users to work together who are sitting some in some different locations but they are working together with the help of this cloud computing only okay so Uh, what are the features of cloud computing on demand uses whenever you need you can increase or decrease the resources whenever you want you can access your data so if i don't want uh, i want 1 gb of data only i'll be using that much only if i want to extend i want to scale it it can be increased also so on demand usage is there the next broad network access as i told from any geographical location your data can be accessed then resource pooling this uh, i can explain you with the help of like when uh, we store our data on google drive there are options that if i want some people to view my, my data i'll open my, the link so others can also view it so there the resource like my stored data and all it is pooled and it is being shared among many users whom i have allowed next scalability whenever there is an, a need for more storage and all this cloud storage can be increased according to the need okay next is advantages of cloud computing now it is very uh, much uh, means you must be knowing now after the previous explanation it is really very cost efficient you don't have to purchase a separate physical uh, device for taking the backup of your data for saving the data and you don't have to carry uh, 
every location to view that data then availability as i told it can be accessed from any geographical location then backup and recovery earlier we used to uh, have those uh, memory cards sd cards small chips uh, then pen drive and all for backing up the data with which there were chances of losing those devices but now we can backup and recover our data from these cloud storage um, options also then storage capacity it can be increased or decreased according to our requirement then comes the types of cloud computing basically there are three types of cloud computing public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud let me start with public cloud in this type of cloud computing the various services and information accessible through the cloud are available to the public and that too free of cost okay you don't have to pay anything like uh, mi cloud is there google uh, drive is there one note is there these are the areas where up to some gbs you will be getting free storage and all and it will be public it will be accessible to every user and it is free of cost then comes private cloud private cloud is basically maintained by organizations like banks and all they have their dedicated servers where the data will be stored and their customers only can access the data and that too there are options which type of data will be shown to them uh, which uh, which should be what type of data should be hidden from their customers so that uh, private organization will have all the accessibility all the options and that data can be shared among its consumers and their um, means uh, human resource only there only it will be used no any outsider can it cannot be used by any outsider okay then is hybrid cloud hybrid cloud is basically a combination of public as well as private okay public cloud plus private cloud is equal to hybrid cloud the uh, organizations can go for private cloud and for some part they can make it public also okay so it becomes very much flexible whenever some more uh, resources or uh, storage and all are required they can switch to that uh, transitioning is possible easily from private to public or public to uh, pr uh, private then comes what are the advantages of public cloud yes it is low in cost maintenance by the cloud company only and very means uh, unlimited scal scalability is there it can be increased decreased according to our requirements as i told up to some gbs it will be free and if you need more you'll have to purchase it then high reliability it is uh, it is safe also next is advantages of private cloud more flexible if the company needs only the private cloud it will uh, stick to that only but there are circumstances when some more storage and all are required so instead of using that private cloud the data which can be which is less sensitive they can shift to or they can uh, switch to the public cloud for some part of the data okay then improved security sensible data in private cloud which is not sensitive that can be shifted to public cloud and then high scalability next is advantages of hybrid cloud of course of course this type of cloud will combine the uh, facilities or advantages of public as well as hybrid cloud here control will be there private cloud is there which is also controlled and public cloud so both the places wherever it is required it is under control only flexible as i told earlier in the advantage of that uh, private cloud also that up to the point where this is required means uh, um, i don't want to switch to that uh, public cloud i will uh, use this private cloud only but if there is need of increased resources and facilities we can switch to public cloud cost effectiveness is there because both type of clouds are used and ease ease basically how much is uh, with what ease they can switch to public then from public to private so that is very easy for the dedicated companies to switch from public to private and private to public next very important difference between public and private cloud here in public cloud we have publicly shared virtualized resources means resources are there which can be public so all these resources are virtual okay virtual you understand meaning of virtual is 
which are not existing in reality we cannot hold that storage space which is provided by cloud though we can store our data publicly and in private cloud privately the data will be stored and it will have more security in comparison to public cloud next comes here uh, public cloud supports multiple customers okay any number of people can access this public cloud but in private cloud only the people in the organization who have the, who is owning this private cloud they can only use this private cloud then this public cloud is basically used with the help of internet only but private cloud they can have their own networking they can go for different types of like fiber cable provides faster network they can go for that only but public cloud is on the normal internet only then for less confidential data public cloud can be used and for sensitive data basically it is suited for secured confidential information and core systems so with this we uh, completed the chapter and i hope you all will watch this video up to uh, till end and uh, today i'm not going to give any assignment first you watch both the parts part 1 and part 2 part 1 uh, i had already posted and part 2 uh, you will watch till end and then um, by thursday or wednesday i'll be giving you more question and answers and with that this chapter will be completed okay so thank you and have a nice day